What's up guys, my name's Luke and welcome back to another tutorial. So today I thought I'd break down some lighting techniques that I used in one of the ads that I did for Carrie Chill & Co. And just some of the problem solving that I had to do working with a very reflective material. If you guys are interested, the project file will be in my Patreon. There's also a lot of other stuff on my Patreon, like some personal projects and also all the project files for all the other tutorials. So if you guys are interested in that, my Patreon's in the bio. If you're not already subscribed, please consider subscribing. We're almost actually at a thousand subscribers, which is really cool. So yeah, let's take a look at this ad and then get straight into it. So yeah, as you can see from that ad, I was told that this brand, they wanted something very luxurious looking, they used Rolex as a reference, and so yeah, let me show you how I did the lighting in this. The reason I wanted to break down the lighting specifically because is because that's the main thing that gives this project, um, I don't know, character. It's a cool way of using lighting, and yeah, it's really simple actually. Uh, so let me show you why I had to do that. So the watch that they have is, it's a really beautiful watch, but the problem with it, at least for the rendering of it, is that it is round and perfectly reflective. Like I very much could add some like surface imperfections to it, but I was asked to not do that because, you know, in a visualization like this, they want the product to look perfect, but also realistic. So with a object like this, if we had to add a light over here, just rotate it and put it off to the side, you can very obviously see that the light, there's a light in the scene. Like even if you had to bring down the power a bit, you can still very obviously see the direction of the light and that just doesn't look nice. Um, I mean, if we had to do this, we would have to have a light over here, over here, maybe at the back, like a rim light. But unfortunately, every single one of them would catch the, the reflections on the side, which just doesn't look good. If you wanted, we could add a softbox, but with a softbox, we're also getting a very similar result where it's very obvious. It's not as powerful. I mean, obviously we can raise the, the intensity of it, but it still shows these very obvious highlights over here. And that just doesn't look good. The first attempt that I did of this, the client sent it back and they were like, they didn't like the lighting in it. So I had to figure out another way of lighting the scene. So what I did was really simple, but really effective was by taking a plane, just rotate it 180 degrees, going over here, adding an octane material. And in the octane material, Let's go to emission, add a texture emission, and then add a image texture over here. So beforehand, I went through and found a few textures that I liked. I found these four in particular. What I searched was just um, guard rays shining through a window, just something like that. I mean, you can almost use any single image because of the fact that we're not actually using the image to, we're not using the details of the image. We're only using it to light and be as background. I'll show you how we did that. So let's grab this one over here. Uh, if you guys don't use pixels, it's a free uh, stock footage and stock image site. That's really cool. So I just got a whole bunch of images from there. So now with this over here, let's change the path tracing. Let's add a octane camera, go in over here. And now just by adding that, we're getting these really nice reflections. So if you had to look here, we're getting these really nice reflections and we're also just getting this really nice overall color to it. There's no obvious sense of there's a light over here, there's a light over here. It just feels like it's a full scene and it just looks really nice and really realistic. So let's also just take this plane, bring it down, rotate it 180 degrees. Let's create another texture over here. And let's just change the image that we're using. So let's go with maybe this one over here. And with the scene, so what we're gonna use is, we're gonna use these images as the background. But with that, 
we have to make the diffuse channel black. So the reason for that is that if we had to use this image in the diffuse texture over here and bring down the power all the way, you're still gonna be able to see it over here, which isn't what we want because it's gonna be catching the light from this top plane over here. So by making it black, we're able so we're able to have complete control of how much is seen depending on how much power we put into it. So it's completely arc directable like that. So let's just move this up a bit. Maybe something like, like that. So let's go over here, select the subject matter, go into this octane tag, thin lens, and then depth of field. Let's just raise up the aperture. We don't really want to see what's in the background. We mainly just want it to be kind of abstracty. It's just going to add like color to it. But what that's going to do is it's going to fill up the scene. So instead of just having like a flat background or flat white background, for instance, using something like this adds a lot more dynamics to the scene and makes it seem a lot more complex than it actually is, even though you're literally just using two planes to get this look. So yeah, I think that looks really cool. Let's just add some pizzazz to it. Let's go over here. Uh, add a LUT. So these are just the normal uh, Octane LUTs that come default with Cinema 4D, I mean, sorry, with Octane. Um, some of them are really good. I used this one for the project. Let's just bring this down a bit. Let's bring up the Highlight Compose, ex uh, Highlight Compression, and then lower the exposure and increase the Gamma by a tiny bit. So the one really nice thing about using images like this is that we're able to completely art direct the way that they look. So if we had to go over here, add a color correction. So the problem with this that I see over here is that this is orange and the background is orange. And that just doesn't look great because with product photography or videography like this, we want the subject matter to stand out from the background. And at the moment, it kind of just blends into one. So we're able to change the color of this just by adding a color correction node over here. So maybe lower the saturation and just the gamma by a bit. And now we're able to have it a lot more white. And now just by doing that, you're able to have a difference between the background and the foreground, which makes this pop out a lot more. Uh, quick tip, if you go over here into view settings and change this opacity and bring this all the way up, this will bring these black bars in which help a lot with like framing and composition because now you know exactly what's going to be in the render. So yeah, that looks really nice. Uh, one other lighting technique uh, I wanted to show you guys is say now we wanted to build out the scene a little bit more and we say now wanted, I don't know, floating spheres around it. I don't know why you would want that, but you know, to make it more dynamic, if that's a thing you wanting to do. It didn't work for this one uh, just because they want something, you know, simple clean and elegant but let me show you how why I'm doing this so let's make this at 150 go over here add a random vector and let's just change the scale to 0.5 and make sure uniform scale is checked let's make that gold and now if we're looking through the camera we can see these little things so so now we just wanted to get like a, a bokeh effect and that's that's what we're going for with these things. But when you're bringing them into the scene, you're like, okay, cool, I don't like the specific lighting on the balls, for instance. So what Octane uh, has allowed us to do, it's ever since one of the latest updates, is that they've added a light pass onto it, which enables us to select certain objects and have light hit them or not hit them based on the tag. So if we had to go over here into this light tag, you'll see that this is light pass ID. So let's say I'll bring that up to four. If we had to add a some 40 octane tag over here, go into the object layer, and then you'll see there's this use light pass mask. If we had to enable that and then turn off light four, oh, that's on the wrong one. If we had to do it on the watch, now the light is only shining on these, but not actually on the watch. So yeah, that's just a really cool, simple technique. I'm just showing you guys that just because it took me a while to find that and I find that when you're creating scenes it helps a lot to light specific things without having it affect the subject matter. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoy this tutorial. I know it was really simple but it's a really cool way of getting some really realistic and really cool looking results from something so simple. So yeah, if you guys enjoyed this please hit the like button and subscribe. 
And yeah, as usual, the project file is in my Patreon. And yeah, thanks for all the support on the channel recently. It's really appreciated. And yeah, I'll see you guys next week. Cheers.